Ken Siegel, the very first presenter we had on stage this year, told a story about a tipping point, a point where a seemingly inconsequential decision could have changed quite a bit of the future. It was Steve Jobs deciding that perhaps Macman was not a good name for a computer and that perhaps iMac would be better. Now, if he'd stuck with his idea on that, if he'd have stuck to his guns and said, we're going to release the Macman, what would have happened? Maybe it would have never taken off. Maybe we'd have never had the iPhone. Maybe everything by now would have changed. So I'd like to tell you a story. And uh, if you'll roll the video, please. I'd like to tell you a story that's set in a future. It's not the future. I'm not going not to promise that this will happen. There's any number of things that could derail it. But I think there's a plausible path from where we are now to where we will be in, let's say, about April 2022, 10 years' time. And the first person we're going to meet there is a man called Jason Stewart. He is the Member of Parliament for Tooting and Streatham. Uh, he's the Minister for Social Development, and he's generally considered a hotshot among his party. Took his seat in the 2020 general election after a very hard-fought battle, um, and is already Minister. He's also currently embroiled in a huge scandal, but we'll get back that, to that in a moment. This is the 2022 iPhone. It looks roughly similar to what you already have. That's because the laws of physics dictate you need a battery brick, and it's got to fit in your pocket. But what has changed is the network speeds. The 5G networks now blanket the country in 100 megabit internet access, and the bandwidth caps have kind of faded away. Which means that last year, Apple reused a trademark and introduced iLife. Now, there are competitors. Uh, Microsoft Nokia phones have your history, and Android phones have Droid Locker. They're both slightly clunkier, but they do work. <laughs> now, they're all descendants of the accountability systems that have been used for police officers and care workers for several years now. With iLife, the phone is always recording audio and sending it and your location to a cloud server. The descendants of Siri then generate a transcript of it. If you talk to someone else who has iLife, it will generate a bubble conversation view of everything you've said. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. And if you use the new Apple headset that came out this year, well, it's got a couple of little cameras embedded in each earpiece. They're small, they're low quality, but they work, and they're on whenever they're plugged into the phone, which means that the same video gets uploaded, analyzed, stabilized, and stored by the same systems. The cables, incidentally, still get tangled every time you put them away in your bag. <laughs> This is, of course, all hooked up to social networks. This is why people use it. It's both for look what I just saw and look what I'm seeing right now. Uh, Justin Bieber's comeback tour got live streamed <laughs> around the clock, and the viewing figures never dipped below 50,000 people. But that's the trivial stuff. The serious part is this. With iLife, you have a complete life log. Every word of every conversation, every stranger you pass in the street, every friendly smile, your memory is now indexed, augmented, and searchable, and your first 50 gigabytes of storage are free. <laughs> now, if you think that's a bit far-fetched, OK, but let's go back. Let's remember that Facebook is less than 10 years old. Twitter is only six years old, and the iPhone itself came out less than five years ago. We've gone from T9 text entry to full voice dictation in half the time that I'm talking about here. Which brings us back to Jason Stewart. He's got several accounts online, including this, Cheshire Boys. It's a site for his uh, alumni of his old public school. It runs on Disco, which is a fairly popular community framework. Unfortunately, Disco isn't the most securely built of software. And it's got a new injection attack that allows mass stealing of passwords. And Cheshire Boys site owner really hasn't had time to update it yet. This is Natalia Orlovsky. She lives in Russia in a former Soviet tower block. She doesn't have much to do, so she's running a script right now that is going around all the disco sites it can find and slurping in every password she can get. She's not about to do anything with it. She's seen what happened to the group that charged porn to Putin's credit card 12 months ago. So what she does with her hundreds of thousands of passwords is just dumps them out on Pastebin anonymously for the hell of it. And it's another big leak. There have been plenty like it before. And the big networks will do what they always do, lock down the accounts of anyone whose password's been leaked and require that they change their password again. But that's going to take a few hours. In the meantime, a lot of people are going to be scrolling through that list. And they're going to be looking not just for their own accounts, 
but for anything interesting. And someone is going to notice tootingjason at gmail.com. His password is Stuart9, which is the same password he uses everywhere, which means that someone is going to go, ha, ha, I think that's my MP. Let's log into his iCloud account. And the first thing they see, Apple's handy is this you feature. Jason Stewart can be seen in a few frames of this public walk-by in Shoreditch. It's just someone with the privacy settings off. He wasn't transmitting, but his phone had his location, and facial recognition did the rest. It didn't take too much detective work to find out what he was doing there. <laughs> so a few minutes later, this email arrives in the inbox of pretty much every political blogger and editor in the country. The small sites run with it first, then the sun goes for it, and then it's everywhere. And shortly afterwards, Jason Stewart's career is ruined. Except it's not. Because he wasn't technically committing a crime under UK law. And he's divorced, so he wasn't even committing adultery. So he decides, what the hell? Let's try this. Let's walk into the House of Parliament, stood up straight, and let's deliver a rousing speech and see if I can't get out of this by saying that our private lives should be private and we should investigate the hackers. And he pulls it off. He convinces the Met to investigate. And they investigate by filing a request with Apple for all the life logs that mention Jason Stewart in the minutes and hours before his account got hacked. And Apple agrees, because the decision on whether they should do that was settled a few years ago, after Blackpool. <laughs> it's two days later, and uh, someone's been arrested. Under 18, we don't know who they were, someone about 16 in Tooting. Um, they've been released on bail on the grounds that they not use the internet or a computer, which means, of course, they can't do anything. It's a computer misuse act, which will cover that, and, well, the trial's next month. So that's the way it works now. If you are the victim of a crime, walk past the victim of a crime, happen to mention someone with the same name who's a victim of crime in the minutes or hours before it happened, your life log will get pulled and run through by the police. And that's a lot of data, but they've got plenty of algorithms to help them with that. And if you're not comfortable with that, well, that's fine. You can always close your account. But it's so damn useful. And besides, all your friends use it. And besides, a lot of companies are requiring that their employees use it just for insurance reasons. And after all, it's not like you've got anything to hide. Right? That is one future. I think it's possible. I think there's a plausible path from where we are now to where we are there. But here's the cool bit. Every single one of you, when you go out those doors, the decisions you make, the tipping points, you don't even realize you're changing. Those are the ones that are going to disrupt the universe and disrupt the future for the rest of your lives. I'm Tom Scott. Have a wonderful party. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much.